Hello and welcome back to Fat Boss TV. Today we're looking at the penultimate boss in Old Deer, which is Mithrax the Unraveler from BFA Beta Testing. So this encounter rotates between two phases every 25% health until the boss is finally killed. The main theme of the encounter is to dodge as many abilities as possible, primarily because of the Annihilation stacks. Each time you're hit by a spell, you'll gain a different amount of stacks depending on what ability hit you. Each stack reduces your maximum health pool by 1%. The majority of spells you can avoid, however some you cannot. This acts as a pseudo enrage as eventually you'll die simply to having too small of a health pool. These stacks however can be removed one by one using the existence fragments. Every time you gain annihilation stacks, these fragments will spawn around you typically for half the amount of stacks you gained. So if you was to gain 8 stacks from being hit by an ability, you'll spawn 4 or so fragments. Each fragment while we were testing removed only a single stack, but the dungeon journal was updated recently and it does suggest that they're playing with the idea of removing two stacks for live. Anyway, with all of that explained, let's jump into phase one and see what we need to do. Now there is two different abilities for the tanks to watch out for. Essence Shit is a 30 yard cone that deals a large amount of damage, applies 16 annihilation stacks and applies a debuff that prevents you from spawning any fragments for 15 seconds. Now, although this ability isn't cast frequently enough to stack on a single tank, you still do have to tank swap. This is because we found the tanks need to go and remove their annihilation stacks after every hit, by running around the room and collecting fragments that the raid has spawned. You could technically solo tank this fight, but it would require you to run all over the room to collect orbs, which will force the boss to move about all over the place, which isn't particularly good for DPS. They have, however, since the first test, changed the debuff to be 25 seconds long rather than 15 seconds long. This will definitely force you to two tank the boss if they keep the timers the same. The other ability for the tanks is Massive Claw, which for some reason isn't listed in the dungeon journal. This is just a cast that deals a shit ton of damage to the tank, and as a result it is a good idea to have a cooldown up for each time this ability comes in. However, providing the tanks do a good enough job at keeping their annihilation stacks as low as possible, this ability didn't seem to be too much of an issue. For the raid to deal with is three abilities. First off is Oblivion Sphere. These orbs spawn on random players and for us they even spawned on the tanks. These orbs charm all players within 5 yards of them instantly as they spawn. Whilst charmed you take a small amount of ticking damage but also gain one stack of annihilation per tick. Killing the orb will remove the charm effect from players. You can however knock charmed players away from the orbs which will completely remove the charm effect. We decided to have the raid, including the melee, spread more than 5 yards apart from one another so only 2 people were hit by the orb's charm and simply just rotated knockbacks to get those people out. Second up is the imminent ruin. This debuff is applied to 2 players and it deals ticking damage over 12 seconds whilst also progressively slowing that target. Once the debuff expires it will deal drop off damage to all players within 45 yards and it will also apply 4 stacks of annihilation to anyone within 12 yards. So the key to this debuff is just to react as fast as you can and get far away from the raid. We had each debuff player run to opposite sides of the room and this seemed to work well. Lastly in phase 1 the raid needs to watch out for the obliteration wave. This ability is cast towards a random player and when the cast is finished a large wave will fire off in that direction. Although the wave deals very little damage, it does apply 8 annihilation stacks. Now ideally you want to avoid this, however if the raid has been good with the imminent ruin debuffs, and if you've killed the spheres off quick enough, there isn't always going to be enough fragments for your tanks to use. We opted to have certain players get hit by this wave, and towards the end of the fight we even had large amounts of the raid get hit so we spawned an absolute ton of fragments for the tanks to use, so they could consistently have their annihilation stacks low. It is something that you do however need to find a balance for because if you have too much of the raid with extremely high stacks of annihilation then you're going to have issues during phase 2. So once you've got the boss to 75% health, he'll move into the middle of the room and begin to take 99% less damage. Also anyone that moves too close to the boss will be knocked back. The moment the phase begins, the boss will cast Zolzayak's Awakening. This spawns Oblivion Spheres and also deals damage to the entire raid, also giving 5 stacks of annihilation. From this point onwards, he'll cast 2 different abilities throughout the phase. Visions of Madness will spawn adds on top of 5 random players. These adds simply just spam cast Mindflay. This deals a huge amount of damage and also slows their target. It's listed as an interruptible spell in the dungeon journal, but we found out that only stuns worked while testing. We had DPS swap to these adds immediately as they didn't have much health and they did do a lot of damage. The other ability to watch out for is the Obliteration Beam. This Ruiner type beam didn't work while we were testing, but it is listed as a deadly ability and like all other beams we've seen in the past, no doubt when this one is working it will probably one shot you. 
Right now it does, however, have the description of the Oblivion Spheres in the Dungeon Journal, so perhaps it's supposed to spawn orbs on players that are hit? We don't really know. One thing to definitely watch out for this beam is that the cast time of it is particularly short, so you don't have too much time to react. But providing you keep a close eye on the boss, it shouldn't be too difficult to dodge, especially with boss mods. Now the last thing to talk about in this phase is the two Naraki Destroyers. These guys hit the tanks extremely hard and also have an essence shear. They also had an interruptible fear, but this has since been removed from the dungeon journal and been replaced by a void volley, a cast that just deals damage to the entire raid. In the dungeon journal, it's also listed that they take 80% less damage if they're tanked too close to each other, but that wasn't active for us, so we could just stack them up and cleave them down. But to summarize this phase for live servers, you'll want to spread the adds apart so the critical mass 80% damage reduction isn't active, you'll want to outheal the volley, whilst you also interrupt and stun the mind flay visions whilst dodging the beam that will probably one-shot you. After so long in this phase, the boss will reactivate and the fight will go back into phase 1. You'll want to make sure that all the adds are dead before you transition back into phase 1, or you're probably going to have quite a big mess to deal with. From this point onwards, the raid damage will begin to feel more spiky on players as people start to gain more annihilation stacks, especially if you save the majority of the fragments for the tanks. We found that anything over, say, 50 to 60 stacks pretty much meant that that player was very close to dying going into phase 2 when the boss does his initial burst, and looking at the changes they made to the adds with the introduction of the void volley, it's probably going to be even worse, so it's going to be interesting to see exactly how you need to manage those annihilation stacks, and what the highest amount you can have before you just flat out die during phase 2. But that's the encounter, what do we think? So changes to these encounters are coming much faster than we thought. This boss was tested less than a week ago of the date of this video being made, and they've already made significant changes in the dungeon journal. So it's hard to kind of give solid feedback as they've already decided to redesign certain aspects of the boss. But we can, however, for the fun of it, just talk about our time with the boss. So phase one is pretty relaxed once you've got the hang of it, but it can go wrong really, really fast. And the main reason for that is just the orbs. Like they have a fair amount of health. So as a result, you're kind of forced to rely on knockbacks to save the players from being charmed and getting a fair amount of stacks. That's fine when you've got like a large raid size as we had, especially if you've got a shit ton of knockbacks from my like druids and whatever, but we can definitely see this being an issue if you've got a smaller raid size. So hopefully it's tuned in such a way that maybe only one orb spawns, or maybe just make it so the orbs have very little health so they can be killed in a smaller raid size much faster. Also, one thing, when tanking this boss, it was super bullshit. It, well, it definitely felt like it. Having the orb spawn on top of your face was so irritating because then it would just turn around and hit someone else. And if that isn't the second tank because they haven't got threat yet, well, see you later, melee DPS, you poor bastard. You know, it completely ruins it. So hopefully they fix that and only ranged and melee players can be targeted. One small thing I would say in phase one is that the imminent ruin seems a little bit underwhelming when it comes to the annihilation stacks being applied to all players within 12 yards. Because if any player is already within 12 yards of someone with the imminent ruin, they're already going to take a burst of damage, so they already know not to be that close. To encourage players to move faster with the imminent ruin debuff, and also other players to keep away from them, I think you could easily increase the stacks being applied to all players within, say, 20 yards or even 25 yards. You've got plenty of time to move with the debuff, even with the slow, so gaining that sort of distance from the raid would be pretty easily done, and it just re-emphasizes the importance of the ability. But again, it is a minor thing. As for the uh, tank stacks, the idea of deliberately having players getting hit by mechanics to spawn fragments is actually a really, really cool idea, and yeah. I hope that the encounter is tuned in such a way so that's pretty much the only viable way of keeping you know, the stacks permanently off your tank. I just think it's a really fun idea and something for you to micromanage, especially towards the end of the encounter. So you're almost going to have to rely on raid leaders making like on-the-spot decision calls of who gets hit by the wave, Yeah. just so you know that the, the tanks don't die because they have no health left. So yeah, I like that a lot. For phase two, it would have been nice to see the beam actually work correctly because almost certainly people would have died to it if it is going to be as deadly as a Ruiner type beam. Yeah. And if it is going to be a Ruiner type beam, I think they do need to increase the cast on it. It does seem maybe a little bit too fast, especially for, uh, for heroic content, but I think that could be argued. As for the vision ads now being able to be interrupted rather than just stunned, I think that's a really good change, primarily because it, you know, again, it helps smaller raid sizes. And also the removal of the fear being changed into a volley on the destroyer adds is also a really good one because, or at least I hope this will significantly ramp up the AoE damage in phase two so healers actually have something to do rather than just spot healing um, the tanks and covering the initial burst of entering the phase. Which in turn also means that players are probably going to have to watch their stacks before entering that phase even more than they already did. So that's really cool. I just cannot wait to heal this encounter when you get to like the last phase two at 25% where everyone has like say 30 plus stacks. And as for Mythic, this encounter has 
quite a few changes listed in the dungeon journal. Right now, it appears that there's going to be a circle that will grow throughout the room during phase one that will remove all the fragments in that particular area. Oh, God. Yeah, so that's going to make uh, managing the annihilation stacks incredibly important, more important than what it is on Heroic, at least. And then for phase two, there's going to be a large targeting circle that probably needs to be soaked by your entire raid. Or cheesed by a single rogue. Let's hope that it's not <laughs> cheesed by a single yeah. rogue. Uh, that whole phase one change, though, I really like the idea of, because right now on Heroic, it feels like if you get any of the Annihilation stacks and you spawn orbs, they're for the tanks. They're not for you yeah. to gather. But if they're going to be eaten by a giant sphere that's consuming the room, well, maybe you can be a bit more greedy and take the stacks which are usually left for your tanks. So that could be leading to some really, really cool strategies. Yeah, looking forward to doing that. But that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this little boss preview, then do drop us down a like. It helps us out a lot. And before we do go, as always, we'd like to give a massive thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon. You guys are absolutely fantastic. We really do appreciate every single one of you for all the support you guys give us. And we shall see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.